Indian automotive market is in an absolute free fall. It's a depression that we haven't seen in many, many years. And automakers, customers, everybody's quite worried about what's happening. But in even in the grey clouds of the depressive market as of now, there are some highlights. These four are the absolute highlights of what's selling, what's still in demand and what's still doing great numbers. These four SUVs are the best and the most competitive segment in the Indian market right now. What we have with us behind me in blue is the Hyundai Creta. The Creta really redefined how SUVs sold in India when it got launched in 2015. It's still a very strong seller which is going to be very highly challenged by this. Made by its sister company, the Kia Seltos has been setting the markets on fire. On the other hand, the MG Hector has been a bit of a wild card. It's come in, it's big, it's butch, it's in your face and there's been quite a bit of demand for that as well. At the back is something that was highly hyped at the 2018 Auto Expo. It is something that has been very anticipated, the Tata Harrier. We're testing these four today to find out which of these four works the best and what they offer you for your money. Of course, uh, design is an important factor for any automotive product. It's one of the biggest factors that uh, either drives the customers towards a product or against it. And when it comes to design, the Creta, well, I have to be honest, after being over four years on the market and sale, after being incredibly popular, is becoming a little stale. Purely because you see so many of them. It's still a decent looker, but I think what the rivals have done is that they've worked in the design a lot harder to make their cars stand out. For example, the Harrier. This was shown at the 2018 Auto Expo. It's big, it's butch, it's got a very interesting design language that Tata designer Pratap Bose infusing into the whole Tata product range. And I have to say, whichever color you look at the Harrier in, whether it's white, whether it's the uh, sunburst orange that you had at the Auto Expo or in, the, in their uh, earlier test cars, the Harrier does catch your attention. I think that's half the job done because if you can make your car stand out on the road, you can be sure that the customer has your attention about what car it is and they might be interested. It's being part of the consideration set. And when it comes to consideration sets and especially when it comes to design, I would have to say that despite whatever else, the MG Hector has really made an impact on the Indian market. You see this big grill here, you see the interesting headlights, you see the whole setup, stacked headlights setup, you see the big size of the car and it really stands out. It's a really unique looking product. I'm not completely sold on the whole design because parts of the car uh, don't really gel like the small, like the wheels, even though 17 inches here, they look quite small on this car. And the rear end with that big tail light, it's not really well executed, but it does catch your attention. And a lot of customers buy it purely for the fact that it's a, it's a shock look. It's something that you notice. Um, the Kia, on the other hand, compared to the Hector or the Harrier actually looks quite subdued. But I have to say, the more you look at the Kia in detail, the more interesting it becomes. Uh, the front tiger nose grille, of course, is a big deal. It strikes your attention. I love the knurled aluminum finish of the front grille, the LED headlights, the whole setup. And uh, as far as proportions go, I think out of all of these four, the Kia in detailing and proportion stands out the best. Is it the one that really grabs your attention? Is it in your face? No, but I think it's the most balanced design. If it was looking at something that you were making a statement for, uh, it would be a challenge between the Hector and the Harrier and I think all four in that sense are quite good looking products and advances for design in the Indian market. Now since in today's test I am spoiled for choice uh, from four different vehicles to drive, I thought I'll start my driving reviews based on when the product was launched in the Indian market. So this among the four vehicles is the oldest product. And that's a really funny fact because you see the Creta, we might think as the oldest product, but it's only been on sale for just over four years. That tells you how competitive the market in India, is, especially when it comes to SUVs. And to give credit where due, the Creta really kick-started the mid-size SUV segment. It was already rolling with the duster. But the numbers that the Creta did were unprecedented and I think it's been a roaring success for Hyundai. They've been selling them as many as they can make. I mean, even when the facelift was launched, uh, the Creta had bookings or rather waiting times, which is uh, quite unheard of in a product that's been on the market for three years. And there is a reason why the Creta is so successful. You see, essentially, uh, between the various uh, engine and gearbox options, it has petrol engines, petrol automatic uh, options, petrol manual, diesel engines, 
diesel automatic, diesel manual, and the number of features it offered uh, before the Seltos came along, of course, was unprecedented. This was the kind of choice that Hyundai was offering to customers. And that's, I think, where Harrier has lost out. Tata has not been able to offer enough different versions and variations for customers. The Creta drew them in because if you wanted a petrol manual, they had an option. Petrol auto, they had an option. Diesel auto, diesel manual. So they were offering you a massive sort of lineup within one model itself. And uh, quality-wise, fit and finish-wise, NVH-wise, the Creta is quite good even compared to the new cars which, are, which have been launched after four years. This has been on sale in India. It really fares up quite well. The ride and handling is very well set up. The steering though is a little dead. I think uh, with the new NEOS and especially with the Venue, Hyundai has improved their steering response further and uh, we're going to see the new Creta based on the second gen platform, which is essentially the same as the Seltos. Uh, we're going to see that next year, but till then this is going to be on sale. As far as pricing is concerned, you know, uh, with the Seltos being a price disruptor, I think you're going to hear that word multiple times in my test today. Uh, the Creta is now beginning to look a tad overpriced. Why Why am I saying that? Well, the top model is only about 30,000 rupees cheaper than a Seltos. And at that price, uh, given the number of features that the Seltos offers or the uh, Hector offers for that matter. Now the 7 uh, inch touchscreen and the Creta feels a little small. The infotainment, the sort of the multi information display screen in front of the driver looks small, is not fully color. All that kind of equipment that it's lost out on is making it look a tad more expensive. So I think what Hyundai is going to do, what naturally all car makers do, is till the new Creta comes along sometime next year, they're going to discount the Creta to a decent level, which will make it even for value for money. So I would think the Creta still ticks all the boxes as far as the basics of a vehicle are concerned. Ride and handling, decent looks. I mean, you only don't notice it so much on the road because there are so many of them on the road, but that's not a bad thing. And uh, it's it's been it's a tried and tested product. And with the discounting when it happens, I think the Creta is still going to be good value. So if you're not in the market for the absolutely latest product and if you can live with the lesser number of features, with a smaller multimedia display, I think the Creta still does very, very well. Uh, does it do as well as the Seltos? I don't think so. I'm going to find that out when I drive the Seltos in a few minutes. But I mean, it really, there are no negatives as such against the Creta, other than the fact that the competition with the Seltos is up the game. This still remains a very solid product. Like I said earlier, when the Tata Harrier was first showcased at the Auto Expo last year, it was a massive hit. I mean, the amount of anticipation that the Harrier or around the Harrier it was built, I think it has only been rivaled by the Nano. It took Tata some time to bring the product to market, but it's been fascinating to see how close the production version of the car was to what the concept was like. And I think this is a significant leap for Tata as far as product is concerned, vis-a-vis -vis quality, vis-a-vis -vis drivability. And there are many positives to the Harrier. First, it's based on a Land Rover platform. So as you would imagine, it rides and handles quite well. It's a, it's a fairly big uh, machine, you know. Uh, if, when it comes to interior space, it's only second to the MG Hector, which is quite large. And it's uh, reasonably larger than the Creta or the Seltos is. And the quality also has been improved in the sense that in, in the Tata product lineup, I don't think we've seen this kind of quality ever. Uh, I quite like the matte finished wood. Uh, that's here, the touchscreen stands out nice. And all in all, the basics of the car are correct. Uh, good space, excellent styling, uh, very good interior uh, design also, good fit and finish. Uh, but as always, there are a few negatives in the car, in the Harrier. First, I think uh, Tata's gone a little overboard in design terms in a few things. Like I hate this aircraft style handbrake, it's terrible. It's something that is never intuitive to use. And I think I said that in my original review of the Harrier too, that it's just something that I don't understand. Why do you want to change this? I mean, the regular handbrake works perfectly fine. Why do you want to fiddle with it? But that's okay. Second thing, after driving the other competitors in this test, uh, the steering of the Harrier, I mean, it's decently communicative, it's direct, it's responsive, but the effort required is quite heavy. So I think for some customers, that will be a turn off. Thirdly, the 138 bhp 2 litre engine, remember this shares the engine with the Compass 
uh, it's quite quick but it's a very linear engine so you really uh, never get that feeling of how powerful it is that's not to say it's slow it's actually quite quick it does three digit speeds very easily and you can cruise at high speed all day especially given the seat comfort and the suspension settings uh, what it misses out essentially as a product offering and what is the biggest drawback one after the pricing of the Seltos which I have to say is a game changer it's what they call now a disruption or a disruptor rather uh, at 13 to 16.75 lakhs X showroom the Harrier seems a tad overpriced especially given that it doesn't have the amount of features that a Seltos or a Hector has uh, other factor uh, lack of transmission options you only are able to get a six-speed manual so there are no autos no petrol options no all-wheel drive options so that hurts customers in today's competitive market when your customer or when a prospective customer enters your showroom you want to give them as many options as possible to virtually make it impossible for them to refuse your product so that essentially I think those are the two factors that really work against the Harrier that one, you don't get any transmission or petrol engine options. Two, at this price range versus the competition and given the standard equipment it has, it feels a tad under-equipped. So all in all, a very capable Tata vehicle, but in this test, it's not going to be the winner. Of course, one of the most uh, anticipated and looked forward to SUVs for this year has been the MG Hector. Now MG as we all know was a British brand is now Chinese owned and in India it was a relatively unknown brand. I mean even among the enthusiasts very few knew or remembered what MG was but to give credit where due the brand has done a good job establishing itself and the Hector ticks a lot of boxes uh, if you're a customer looking for a big SUV. Uh, like I said earlier when you look at it uh, this is probably the most striking car out of the four of uh, uh, competitors that we have uh, sure it has its shortcomings especially in profile the wheels look too small I'm not a fan of the rear end but the, that front grille with that headlamp setup I mean it does catch your eye that reason itself it's got to attract a lot of people second reason that really works for the Hector well it's the by far the most spacious car in this test it's big I mean there's lots of space the seats are really comfortable uh, and from that aspect practicality also it works quite well and it has its share of toys uh, right from the voice control to this big 10 plus inch screen you know it's it's got the gizmos uh, the big panoramic uh, sunroof all that factor I mean obviously that makes it attractive to a certain set of customers and even a regular customer would be quite tempted because the car's big, it's priced really well. I mean, the top model is priced under 16 lakh rupees, which is quite a large amount of car for not that large amount of money. And uh, it works in many factors. Where it doesn't work well, I'm driving the diesel manual. It's also available as a petrol manual, petrol hybrid, petrol automatic. Uh, the diesel, I haven't driven the petrol yet, but the diesel actually feels quite uh, decent. The engine is quite refined. The enriched levels are fairly low. Uh, I was on the expressway a while ago at uh, three digit speeds the car has no problem it's uh, fairly well settled high speed stability is not a problem but uh, when you really start pushing the Hector into corners and throwing it around and driving it like you would drive a Creta that's where things come to start unraveling a bit for the Hector uh, it understays a lot it's a big heavy car and you can feel that weight there's a lot of body roll even when you open the doors I mean you can feel the heft now for that that for some people could be something very nice I mean it gives you a solid feeling but the doors are heavy I mean I find them a bit of an effort to operate and for some people that might be a turn off but like I said it was it is a big heavy car and you know you can't defeat the laws of physics and uh, the one thing that really stands out for me in a negative way is the steering I mean it really is rather vague and when you start pushing the car the cars just all over I mean it's it's not something that uh, uh, you would really like throwing around in corners on a straight line like I said it works fine but uh, if you're going to be pushing it around trying to drive it fast I don't think the Hector is meant for you so the Hector for me appeals to the customer who's mainly seated in the rear seat the chauffeur takes care of the driving duties it has all the toys all the glitz uh, and it is quite comfortable too the ride actually is quite well set up even on bad roads at decent speeds uh, there's no sort of uh, problem inside the cabin but 
mm, performance wise i'm i'm i don't think this is the car when it comes to performance or when it comes to pure driving appeal it's great when you're sitting in the back it's great if you need the space um also the other factor would be uh, as many companies have realized that setting up a new brand in india is not easy so how will the long term ownership uh, prospect of the mg be that's that's a question that none of us really have an answer for right now mg is offering a lot of things a warranty uh, guaranteed buyback schemes so that way they're trying to build faith and like i said they've really launched the brand very well into india but it's not a complete product and there are some glaring faults that need to be rectified with the car when it comes to the ride and handling setup Now we come to the final contender of our test today, the Kia Seltos. Now you see, uh, in 2018, Kia had also made a big bang entry into the Indian market. They had a huge stall at the Auto Expo where they displayed virtually every car they sell uh, in their global lineup. Now that obviously got uh, people interested, and they've ever since kept the hype around the brand, kept the brand building going on vis-a-vis -vis their. Uh, whether it's via their uh, association with football worldwide whether it's via their association with tennis so they've been building on the brand and uh, i have to say the, the one of the biggest things that shocked me was the number of touch points or dealers uh, that they were going to launch the seltos with over 200 already and i think that's a huge sort of confidence building measure as far as a new brand and indian customers are concerned if you see more dealerships around you uh if you see dealerships coming up all over the country then of course you can see that the brand is serious and here for the long run the product of course has also lived up to expectations like i said earlier in the design uh, aspect it might not be as flashy as uh, the hector or the harrier but it still stands out the kia globally is known for their design language especially about their color combinations and the detailing and that detailing stands out If you've seen my earlier review of the Seltos, I really like the GT line. That red detailing works for me. It gives uh, the Seltos a youthful look, which I think works really well for a large section of consumers. The other thing that they've done, obviously learning from their uh, partner company Hyundai, is the fact that they're offering multiple options as far as engines and gearboxes are con concerned to Indian customers. In fact, they're offering three different engines, four different gearboxes, and there's a plethora of choice to choose from. In fact, uh, it, there were so many versions at launch that it took us a few days to realize exactly what was what and which version was available with which engine. Like what I'm driving today is the GTX Plus, the absolute top of the line, petrol 1.4, 138 bhp six-speed manual. This, of course, has all the toys that the Seltos offers. Uh, whether it's the LED headlights, whether it's the large 17-inch wheels, the GT Line uh, trim. the sunroof bose audio ventilated front seats it's packed to the brim and the other thing about the seltos when you enter it is that one of course you look at the design i love the red detailing on the black interiors i mean no, that's that's something that i really like but then i'm partial to red anyway i love the hd display that they give you and the whole car feels of a quality above any of its competitors the other thing seats fantastic i've mentioned that earlier too but the seats i really like and the handling right setup of the seltos is also extremely well done with this 138 bhp engine you can do 0 to 100 in under 10 seconds it's quite quick uh, the the peak torque arrives at very low rpm just above idle actually and that makes the car very drivable there are a couple of things which are shortcomings with the seltos especially when you view it in comparison with the competitors directly one of course the interior room is nowhere near the hector even the harrier is slightly bigger uh, this and the creta there's a marginal difference i think this is just slightly larger than the creta inside uh, so it's not much of a difference there but compared to the harrier and the hector this is not there uh, the other thing i had said in the automatics i would prefer if we could get some paddle shifts and my last pet peeve is the lack of a physical volume button but all of these things i mean other than the space i'm just nitpicking the one biggest shock for the seltos though has been that one it's going it is all cars being sold in india from day one are bs6 compliant so when april 2020 when the new bs6 norms actually kick in most other cars will see a price increase but i think the seltos will remain at the same price which is going to be a big plus for customers since it's already bs6 compliant it takes away that headache that current confusion that customers have 
should I buy a BS4 or a BS6? I mean, that's completely taken away. So that I think is also a great confidence building measure. And the biggest shock for me with the Seltos, uh, I mean, like I've said, right and handling, fantastic quality, fantastic number of features, number of dealers. I mean, the brand sticking all the right boxes. But in the really price sensitive Indian market, and we are very price sensitive, rather value sensitive Indian market, at the price point that the Seltos is launched at, 15.99x showroom for this exact car is phenomenal. It offers better value for money than virtually all of its competitors. And that, I think, is the last icing on the cake of the Seltos. The Seltos wins this segment test not only because of what a fantastic package it is when it comes to quality or driving appeal or looks or the overall design theme, but also because the number of features it offers and unless you really need the space that the Harrier or the Hector offer, I would think the Seltos would be the best option for you.